sometimes I think all we need is a children's message to get us through on a Sunday morning. I hope you have another 20 minutes uh, in you to hear what I have to share, but um, I think uh, Jordan's message was pretty clear, so. <laughs> it doesn't need much explanation, and you just got it, right? Jesus said, I am the true vine doesn't take much brain power to understand what Jesus is talking about. It's one of his most vivid and powerful illustrations of the believer's relationship with him. Just as branches can only bear fruit if they remain connected with the vine, the only way believers can glorify the Father through fruitful lives is by remaining in Jesus. It's rather simple. We must stay connected to the true vine. Well, what's interesting about this particular statement is that Jesus gives a command following what he says. It's a command to stay connected, and there are some good reasons why, and I'd like to share those uh, with you this morning. Just a little bit of background uh, so we know where we are. As was in the case with uh, several of the other I am statements, Jesus says this one, this particular one, on the Thursday night before he is arrested and put to death. And I told you last week about Jesus' farewell discourse. That's the block of teaching and encouragement that he offers to his friends at the Last Supper. And you'll recall uh, something very significant happened, well, lots of significant things happened uh, during that supper, but particularly, you'll recall that during this meal, Judas is dismissed by Jesus to put into motion the events that led to his death. Judas has been exposed, and he leaves to set up Jesus' betrayal. The rest of them finish up in the upper room, and they begin their walk to the Garden of Gethsemane. That was a place where Jesus and his followers went often to pray. Uh, and this is, of course, where Jesus is confronted later on. And as they are walking through the Kidron Valley, which is the valley between the Temple Mount and the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus continues to teach them. He continues this farewell discourse. And I imagine that maybe you can too, if you can picture this, the scripture doesn't really tell us, but I can imagine that as they are walking, as they are leaving the city and uh, they are walking through some cemeteries and walking past vineyards and looking up at uh, the temple that has uh, these uh, wonderful pictures of Grapevines, because it was such uh, a common agricultural product, uh, included on the temple was Herod's grapevine. I don't know if you uh, know about that, but it was a very ornate uh, uh, picture of uh, where people entered into the temple. And I can imagine as they walked by, they were looking probably at the temple and also walking through these uh, through these small groves and certainly some vineyards. And I think. Jesus can't pass up the opportunity to give an object lesson they won't forget. I think the thing that is freshest in Jesus' mind at that particular moment is that there is a disciple missing from the group. One of them is on his way to betray him. And Jesus' point perhaps may be that Judas is the branch that doesn't stay. Judas is the branch that doesn't remain. And the rest are about to desert him too, even Peter. Jesus wants them to stay connected. He wants all of his disciples to do the same. Thinking about this final I am statement, I've been pulled back multiple times to the fact that Jesus speaks and he almost pleads with his disciples to remain in him. This phrase, to remain in him, is repeated eight times in 11 verses. Repetition, probably very much aware of this, but 
Repetition is a simple literary device to communicate importance. So there can be no doubt, I think, whatsoever that this concept is one that Jesus wants his friends to fully understand and try to live out. It's not just that he once again affirms his oneness with the Father in stating what he said, as is with the other six that we reviewed. It's not simply an I am statement. It comes along with this crucial message. The disciples and all of us who are connected to Jesus need to stay that way. The branch that is disconnected from the vine dies. I think we all get that. And this is not just a message to those who are looking for truth. It's much more one that is directed at those who have already found it. That includes you and me. Just how do we stay connected is really the question this morning. Brian Hedges, who is a contributor to Christianity.com, outlines a couple of ways, and I just uh, took a moment to adapt a couple of those things that he shared. But his uh, first uh, concept that he wants us to understand uh, in outlining ways to stay connected is to understand that we are fully dependent on Jesus. A branch can do nothing apart from the vine. It has no life of its own separated from it. The branch is dependent on the vine, but the vine is not dependent on the branch. The branch gets its life and power from the vine, all of its nutrients and water, we understand that too. And as Jesus pointed out, without staying connected, the branch is useless. It withers and it dies. When God made trees, he had to put them in something so that they could be supported, right? He spoke to the earth. He intended the earth to sustain the tree. When God made fish, he also made what? Water for the fish to live in, right? That was to be their home. When God made us, he said, let us make man in our image. And he breathed life from him into us. These three things are alive. However, they are not independent. If you pull the fish out of water, it dies. If you pull the tree out of the dirt, it dies. So too we, if we do not stay connected to Jesus, the vine, the breath of and life from God, we will wither away and die. We are completely dependent on God for life. You may have heard this before, and I may have even preached it before, maybe even here, but there uh, is a very old, uh, the oldest living grapevine in the world is located in London. I don't know if you're aware of this, in the Hampton Court Palace. It's over 230 years old. This grapevine has a root which is 12 feet around, and some of the branches are over 120 feet long. Even as old as it is, the vine still produces 500 to 700 bunches, or between 485 to 705 pounds of grapes each year. And what's most amazing is that although some of the branches are 120 feet from the main root, they are still very fruitful. There's only one reason for that. They remain dependent on the vine. We need to recall Jesus' own words about being life to us and how dependent we are on him. A second aspect uh, that this gentleman lays out in staying connected to Jesus comes from the Greek word that means not only to remain or stay, but also has a forward-looking sense to it, to continue to stay, to continue to remain. It's not enough just to be connected, but to continue to be connected in the future. In other words, for us, living a faithful life is not just about recognizing and accepting the gift of Jesus, 
but to live each day in light of that decision or realization. It's an ongoing relationship that we have. Jesus didn't just do something wonderful in the past. That moment makes a difference every day now and into the rest of our lives. At least it ought to, and I think you'd agree with me. That can happen as long as we stay connected to him. This simply means that we go on trusting, we keep on depending, we never stop believing. It's the call to persevere. Not only should we be united with Jesus, we need to continue to rely on him. Which brings us, I think, to the real issue of what Jesus was talking about when he shared this I am statement. The issue of fruitfulness. The whole point of being connected is to be fruitful. It's a hallmark of a disciple. In answering the question of how to stay connected, we should also answer the question of why we should stay connected. And that answer has two parts. The first part is that Jesus offers life, and being connected to him means that we have accepted that life for ourselves. He made that point every time he shared an I am statement. But as we continue to rely on him, we are supposed to be doing something. And the thing we're supposed to be doing is producing fruit. There's a byproduct of staying connected to the vine. Our lives are supposed to be fruitful like the branch that produces lots of grapes. We should stay connected because we were designed to make life better and to point people toward Jesus and share the gifts that come with being connected. You've heard them before. They're the gifts of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All who are connected to the I Am produce these to some degree. However, if we remain, if we stay dependent, if we continue in him, these gifts will become more and more evident as we continue to grow. So how does that happen? Well, in this teaching, Jesus makes it clear that there is a very, very strong connection between obedience and fruitfulness. He speaks not only of being fruitful, but also degrees of fruitfulness. Verses 1 and 2 say, I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches so that they do bear fruit, so they will produce what? Even more, right? That's why you prune. God wants us to be as fruitful as possible. Additionally, verse 8 says, When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. It is not God's intention for us to live adequate lives for him. He wants to produce much fruit in us. And the way he does that is through obedience. Verse 10 reads, When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. Jesus didn't single out any commandment necessarily, but he did say in the verses immediately following uh, what Bud read for us this morning that his command was to love one another, and surely doing that, loving one another, produces much fruit. In one sense, Jesus' description of remaining in him seems to be an all-or-nothing deal. If someone remains in him, in his love and in his word, this proves that they are his disciples. To not remain in him and in his love and in his word is to show that one is not a disciple at all. So to be a believer is simply to remain, to be connected. You're either connected or you're not. However, Jesus gives the command to remain 
in verses 4 and 9. He tells us to remain in him and his love actively and regularly. It is a direct command that he uh, offers to his disciples to make the choice to follow him every day. It's something we must continue to do. Remaining in him is not just the status of a Christian's relationship with Christ. It's also an ongoing daily choice. How do we do that? Again, through obedience. The more obedient we are, the more fruitful we become. And fruitfulness is an ongoing experience that we grow into by degrees. It's not just that some Christians remain and some don't. It's not either or, it's both and. If you believe in Jesus, you are in him. You are united to him. You are connected to the life-giving branch. But no matter where we are on our spiritual journey, we can experience the reality of this connection more and more. There are degrees of fruitfulness, and we can become more fruitful. We can enjoy Jesus more. That's why Jesus says in verse 11, I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. He not only wants us to have joy in our lives, he wants us to have joy past the point of having full joy. I don't know exactly what that is, but that's quite a promise. So theologically and practically, all believers are in union with Christ, but all believers can also remain in him in varying degrees. So I want to be uh, very clear about this. We can be confident in our relationship with Jesus just as a branch remains connected to the vine. But how fruitful we are depends on our efforts to follow Jesus' commands, to be obedient, and to choose to follow. That's what a disciple does. Like the branch on the vine, it must be cultivated in our lives. It's not automatic. Fortunate for us, as a vine grower lifts up and prunes the branches, so God does the same thing with us. But that's a whole different sermon, isn't it? God pruning us. Uh, so we'll wait on that. Remaining in Jesus doesn't require going beyond the gospel. It doesn't require a crisis decision or a special experience. It does mean keeping the words of Jesus in our hearts and minds so that they renew and revive us. The better we keep those words, the more fruit we will produce, the more joy we will have, and the more God will be glorified. God wants us to produce much fruit. The believer who remains in Christ has his prayers answered, experiences a deepening love for Christ and for other believers. We just need to do this one thing and that is to remain in him. And that, brothers and sisters, brings us to the end of our I Am series. Jesus told us who he is. He's the bread of life, the source of spiritual fulfillment. He told us he is the light of the world. He told us he is the gate for the sheep, the path to safety and nourishment and a good life. He has told us that he is the good shepherd who lays down his own life to save ours. He told us that he is the resurrection and the life, that if we believe in him, we will receive a resurrection from the dead into eternal life and a new life that begins here and now. He told us that he is the way, the truth, and the life the only exclusive way to the Father and the sole source of our eternal life. And he said he is the true vine and we 
are the branches. Not only does he tell us that he and the Father are one, but also that we can be one in him. If we remain in him, if we pursue him, and if we seek him and love one another, following his example, he will be in us, and we will produce much fruit of our 